to what is week two of a four-week sermon series that we are basing on our pathway of discipleship. As you probably saw as you came in, we've got some new banners, some new things going on out in the, in the narthex, and we are really excited that here in September we're able to finally launch our new pathway of discipleship. Uh, starting back in January, I started meeting with a group of, uh, of members, and they were just crazy enough to say yes when I asked them to be a part of this discipleship pathway building. And it was our job to take a look at how we make disciples at Faith Church and help us to figure out a way to do that intentionally. And so we did. We sat down and we uh, had a lot of meetings and we drank a lot of coffee and we figured it out. And we actually found a pretty natural pathway within our own church. And so we thought, let's take this pathway and let's make it, uh, make it intentional. Let's do it uh, on purpose. And so that's what we are unveiling right now, this pathway of discipleship. And uh, Pastor John last week spoke on our first step, which was gather about the importance of coming together and worshiping as a community. And today we're going to take just a step down um, on our pathway. We're going to look at this word grow. But before we do that, I do want to just mention, uh, because I, I have the microphone and I get to say this, uh, small groups start this week. We can st you can sign up for a small group this week. One of the most exciting parts of this pathway is that we have seven brand new small groups that we've never had before. So it's really exciting. If you're looking for a way to get plugged in to our church and you haven't quite figured it out yet, one really great way is a small group. So take a look. Stop at the table out there. Uh, well, you can ask us some questions and we'll try our best to give you an answer. We're really excited about all of that. And also, here in a couple of weeks, we're going to start some new Bible studies. We have a ton of new Bible studies starting uh, on Sunday morning, but also throughout the week. So take a stop and, and take a look, and, and we can help you and answer some questions for you. Um, so we're going to look today at this, uh, this idea of grow. And I think it's kind of funny. Pastor John and I sat down, and we were trying to decide what we were going to, who was going to talk about what on these, this pathway. And I got the word grow, and I cannot grow anything. I try really hard. Um, the only thing I can grow are children. If you've looked at my, my kids, you can tell that they, uh, they're taller than most. Don't know where they got that. It certainly wasn't for me. Uh, but when it comes to plants, I can't grow anything. Uh, I was given a cactus in college, and it died. And I don't really know how that happened. And then Brad got me this beautiful plant for Mother's Day. I mean, I really was excited. It was this beautiful uh, orange plant. It had these tall stalks with these orange blooms on it. I have no idea what it was, but it was really pretty. And uh, it had a little tag on the inside, and I thought, I'll follow the instructions, right? It says, you know, indirect sunlight. So I found the perfect spot in our house, you know, up on, a, on the mantle. It's bright in there. I thought, good indirect light. The cats can't get up there. And I thought, I'll water it, you know, I'll test the soil with my finger. Uh, within two weeks, it was dead. And I mean, like, dead, dead. The, it was, the cats had chewed off all of the, the, the leaves. The stalk had fallen over. All the blooms were dry. It was hopeless. I thought, you know what, let's stick it outside. There was another one that might just come up, so another bloom that just might come up. So I thought, let's stick it outside, and maybe that'll help. And then it rained a lot, and it flooded, and it just, I can't grow anything. But... When I, when I read through scripture, one of the things I do find over and over again is this idea of um, seeing plant growth as a symbol for spiritual growth. We see it kind of all over the place. There's uh, the, uh, the scripture in John about, I am the vine and you are the branches. We hear about the fruit of the spirit. We have all of these, uh, these symbols within God's word about growing our faith as it looks like a plant. And one of the things that I thought about was the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13. The parable of the sower is, it shows up in a couple of uh, gospels, but we're going to look at Matthew chapter 13. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have a pew Bible and you want to join us, it's Matthew chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9 and then also 18 through 23. We're going to skip a little bit in the middle. So if you want to follow along, here it is. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got in a boat and sat in it, but all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 
a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And then one of the things I love about the scripture is that then Jesus goes on to explain himself, which is the best part. Uh, so we don't have to try and figure it out. He tells us plainly what, what this means. In verse 18, he goes down to say, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When people hear the message about the kingdom and do not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their hearts. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to people who hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to people who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to people who hear the word and understand it. They produce a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. If we want to be growing disciples of Jesus Christ, if we want to, be, to stop on this pathway of discipleship, and we look at this word grow, if we want to be growing disciples, we need to be hearers of the word, and we need to understand it. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? Two steps, hear it and understand it. But God's word is not easy to hear, and it's not easy to understand. But let's break this down just a little bit. The first word here, the first thing he says, is to be hearers of the word. Now, back in this time, it, they, they just spoke the word. They didn't have a written word like we do. You know, we did, I can sit at my desk and reach four different Bibles if I want to. My kids have several different Bibles. Uh, we probably have, we could probably give everybody a Bible in this whole church. We just have them all over the place. It's very easily available to us, isn't it? And so we can read the Bible, we can hear the Bible, but as hearers of the word, maybe perhaps we better um, change that wording a little bit and say maybe we should consciously consume God's word. Not just be hearers, but consume God's word. I don't know about you guys, but um, we are bombarded by so many voices, by so many things all the time. And what do we really consume? That's why we want to talk about this idea of consciously consuming. The other day I walked into Griffin's room and he, was, uh, he had a book on tape playing on a CD player. He was playing on his iPad. He, had, he was eating a snack, and he was talking with his sister. And so I don't know exactly what thing he was giving the most attention to. If anything, was he actually, did he know what that story was saying? Was he actually watching the video on his iPad? What was it that he was doing? But that's so true of us. I'm, I'm guilty of sitting down at the end of the day to watch, you know, one of my favorite TV shows, and I'm on my phone or I'm talking, or spending time with the kids. I'm not really paying attention to any one thing. So if we want to be conscious consumers of God's word, we need to read it, we need to listen to it with intention. We need to pay attention to what's in God's word. If you look at the, at the scripture, it says to be hearers of the word, not just listening to it, but to attend to it, or to consider it. So as we read and consume God's Bible, it needs to be rolling around in our mind a little bit. We need to consider what it is we're reading. Consider what it is we hear. In, uh, in Joshua 1.8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We read God's word, we consume God's word to gain knowledge, to know what God's word says, to know what the Bible says. It's important for us to know those things. Uh, there's this story that's always stuck in my mind. There was a speaker at camp a few years ago, and uh, he was talking about, he was on, he was in Israel, and he was learning from a rabbi, and the rabbi was kind of getting on the Christians a little bit, and he said, you guys say you follow Jesus, but most of you have no idea what Jesus even said. And those words have kind of stuck with me a little bit. How can we say we're followers of Christ when we don't even know what the word says? So as we are hearers of the word, consumers of the word, we need to be knowing and, under, and, and, and beginning to gain knowledge about what's in God's word. But then here's the second thing. Not just knowing God's word or reading it, it's understanding it. Just consuming God's word doesn't bring us life change, does it? Just reading God's word for academic purposes doesn't change our hearts. But we need to dig in. We need to be rooted in Scripture. We need to dig into it, learn from it, 
work through it, to be good soil. We have to be more than just hearers. The rest of the, the seed that was sown, the one on the path and the one on the rocky soil, the one amongst the weeds, they all heard God's word. But the difference is the good soil is the one who does what? They understand God's word. I was, uh, I was looking through some things this week as I was online, and I found this, I think this is kind of funny, this is a Catholic elementary school test where they had to, um, these kids, I don't know if they were questions, there's no questions on here, I just have the answers, but they were asked some Bible stories to explain them. And these are some kids who know the Bible, but maybe don't quite understand it well. I'm going to give you a couple answers that I found. I think you guys will think this is pretty funny. So this is, like I said, answers from a Catholic elementary school Bible test. Samson, you know, Samson with the hair, slayed the Philistine with the Acts of the Apostles. Acts, A-X-E, Acts of the Apostles. Um, Moses led the Jews to the Red Sea, where they made unleavened bread, which is bread without any ingredients. Um, the first commandment was when Eve told Adam to eat the apple. Uh, Jesus enunciated the golden rule, which says, do unto others before they do one to you. <laughs> he also explained that a man doth live by sweat alone. That's a good one. It was a miracle when Jesus rose from the dead and managed to get the tombstone off the entrance. The people who followed the Lord were called the 12 decibels. And Christians have only one spouse. It's called monotony. That makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> this is a big job to not just know God's word, but to understand it, right? We have to be able to dig in and not just know what it says, but to understand what that means for our lives, for our hearts, and what difference that makes in our lives today. And most of the time we think about uh, knowing scripture as like a biblical uh, theologian or somebody who knows all the nuances. There's so much in this book that we're not going to be able to understand on our own. But we do need to try. We do need to try and understand God's word. The key here for us is to be challenged, to dig in a little bit deeper, um, to not just look because we need to, but to look because we desperately want to know God and meet him here. I love that when we start to look at scripture and we start to understand who wrote the book of the Bible we're studying, why they wrote it, when they wrote it, and how they wrote it, we can peel back the layers of these stories and start to see something a little bit different. And in the end, in every story, we see a God who is constantly, lovingly pursuing us. It's all in here. And this is where our hearts begin to change, where knowledge becomes more than just head knowledge. It becomes heart knowledge when we dig in and see the truths that are in here. I love this verse in 2 Timothy uh, in chapter 3. It says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that a man may be competent and equipped for every good work. For every good work. That's what we're trying to do here, is to be equipped for every good work by learning, by understanding God's word. The best part about this, though, is that it, he doesn't stop here. When he talks about Jesus is telling this parable, he says that you should hear God's word and you should understand so that you can produce a crop. We talk about this idea of being disciples who make disciples. A disciple is someone who's taking one step closer to Jesus Christ. And if we're to make disciples, then we need to help someone else take one step closer to Jesus Christ. And so the great part is that when we're learning, when we're using our head knowledge, we're reading and understanding, begin to share what it is you're learning. What questions do you have? What has interested you? What has raised red flags for you? What, are, what, are you, um, what answers are, are being shown through the scripture? Share those things with the people around you. Help them to take one step closer to Jesus Christ so that you can take one step closer to Jesus Christ. It's a journey. We want to invite people to come along with us on this journey. And what's so wonderful about this is that's what this step of grow is all about on this pathway of discipleship. It's about reading and understanding God's word, but doing so in a context where we can do it together. Sometimes we can read the same piece of scripture over and over and over again and still not see anything but our own perspective. But when we come together, we sit down at a Bible study, and we learn from other teachers, other leaders. We have a DVD study or whether we're just digging into God's word with some 
some extra uh, education, we're going to learn something else and some different perspectives. We have a lot of growth studies happening. A growth study is basically a Sunday school class or a Bible study or a topic-based class that we're going to be starting here in a few weeks, September 27th or 24th, excuse me. We have a ton of new ones starting. And so if you're interested in learning about God's Bible, learning about this word, and you want to take it one step further to understand, this is a great place to start. That's what these growth studies are all about. It's helping us to consciously consume God's word, but then to also understand it. So as you go today, stop at the table, come and talk to me. I'd love to just share with you about some other opportunities we have so that we can be a church that is making disciples who go out and make disciples. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful holiday weekend. Lord, we also just thank you for the chance we have, that we have a, this available word straight from you to us, your word. Lord, help us to consciously consume it, not to let it go in one ear and out the other, but allow it to change us from the inside out. That the truths that are found in here become a part of who we are. And as we learn and, and we gain knowledge, that we would not only just have knowledge, but our faith would just grow in such a way that the lives around us are also changed. Lord, we just love you, and we thank you for this gift. We bless him and we pray. Amen. So disciples grow. And one of the main, main ways we grow is through God's holy word. But another way in which we grow, especially spiritually, one way we are nourished so that we can be good soil, is through holy communion. And it is in God's word that we read. And this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the, new, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so today we, we follow Paul's words of gathering together to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection, and that one day he will come again. We come to remember Jesus and all that he has done. We come to remember his body, which was broken, his blood, which was shed. We come to remember that it is through Jesus that we become disciples, that we can grow, that we can become the people that God has called us to be. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, spiritual nourishment this way that you have given to us so that we can grow as disciples. And some of it is a mystery and we don't quite understand it all, but we know that when we come for communion, your Holy Spirit is with us, that you strengthen us, that you encourage us, that you give to us what we need to be the disciples you've called us to be. And so I pray that you will be with us here this morning as we have gathered together to remember Jesus, to remember his death and resurrection. And so as his followers, followers, we come. We come to confess our sins. We come to confess that we need a Savior. And so I invite everyone just to spend a few moments in silent prayer. Confessing your sin to God. Admitting your need for a Savior. That there is something broken. There is something missing. And the thing that can feel it, fill it. The thing that can make you whole. The thing that can forgive you and give you purpose is Jesus. So let us spend a few moments in prayer.